What's going on? 819S here. The question of the day is, do you need to speak Japanese to ride a motorcycle in Japan? I've been thinking about this for a while and I think I have two answers for it. If you plan to come to Japan for a week or two, maybe even up to a month or two, and you just want to ride around, I think you don't really need to speak or read Japanese that much. You can get away without having that much Japanese language ability, but you have to, you have to be careful. So the, the things I'll point out is this. If you do want to come, you can ride in Japan on an international license. There's no problem with that. So that's the main point, I think, is having a license, the legal ability to ride. The next point is the Japanese police are very strict. It's very rare for them to let someone go from a traffic mistake. So if you do want to ride in Japan, make sure that you follow the law as close as you understand it. So if you do get stopped by the police, there's another problem. Most Japanese police do not speak English. And from the experiences I've had, Japanese police don't have like an English speaker they can just get on the phone. So if you are going to break the law, like intentionally or unintentionally, then you're going to want to make sure that you have some Japanese language ability. But I think if you stick to the letter of the law, if you don't speed, if you don't run red lights, if you don't do anything like that, you probably be able to ride safely with no problem. The other point is you need to be able to get a bike. So there are motorcycle rental places that speak English. You should be able to rent a bike, no problem. If you do a little bit of research online, you can find a place that will rent motorcycles and they have English speakers available. Again, that shouldn't be that big of a problem, but make sure that you find a place that has English speakers available. My understanding of it is that it's a little bit more expensive if you want English speaking staff. The places that offer that as a service generally charge a little bit more money. But I think if you're gonna spend the money to come all the way out here, it might be worth it, so don't worry about it. The other idea then is if you plan to stay in Japan for a longer time, for I would say probably more than three or four months, definitely over a year, definitely. Then you want to look into getting a Japanese license. If you're going to be here over a year, international licenses don't work anymore. They become illegal after one year of a visa. I believe if you leave the country and you get a whole new visa, you don't renew your old visa, then maybe you, you can get away with using your international license again, but I wouldn't risk it. If you're going to be here for more than a year, just go for it and, and get the license properly. So in that case, you definitely want to have some conversational ability in speaking Japanese. The reason I say that is when you go to the licensing center, the test center, basically the Japanese DMV, they don't speak English there. Um, there's a paper test that you have to take if you're an American, and the paper test is available in English actually, so that's no problem, but the staff that you're going to talk to, they're going to do a short interview with you and it's all going to be in Japanese. They're going to do an eye test and it's go going to be in Japanese. So if you have uh, just conversational ability, you can, you know some vocabulary, you know some basic phrases, and you can put together a really simple sentences, you should be okay, I think. The other thing is, the longer you drive here, the more possibility of being pulled over. I think that's kind of law of averages, right? The more you do something, the likelihood of, of a unfortunate event happening increases, right? So let's say you have a traffic accident or the police stop you for speeding or for running a red light or violating a law that you were unaware of, something like that. You're going to need to speak to the police officer. You're going to need to speak to emergency services. You're going to need to speak with the person you had the accident with. And again, the, the chances that they speak English or speak enough English to get the, the situation handled properly is pretty unlikely. I mean, the fluency level of 
Japanese to speak English is pretty low. So if you plan to stay here, I would say three months or more, you're really going to want to start studying conversational Japanese. Asking for directions, uh, filling up gas, asking for help, getting a tune-up, that kind of basic communicative thing. And the other thing that you need when you ride in Japan, you need to be able to read some Japanese. And that's because not a lot of the signs are bilingual. In fact, I can't think of many that are actually bilingual. Most of the signs that I see are only in Japanese. Um, the signs that have place names and maybe exit ramps might have English on them. But the majority of signs you see are going to be 100% Japanese. The problem with that is they're going to be written in kanji, not in hiragana or katakana. So when you do see street signs written in kanji, you're going to have to learn those characters. If you're using a textbook or something to study Japanese language, a lot of times those characters are not going to be included, or they're not going to be until like higher levels further down the road. So when you do finally get around to learn them, you're pretty much near fluent, like you're beyond conversational Japanese, I think. So when you do come across street signs, like you see a sign here, you want to know what it means, that's for you to do the research. You look at all the kanji characters. If you have access to someone who can help you, who can support you, someone who speaks Japanese already or a native Japanese speaker, Maybe they can translate it for you, maybe they can just tell you how to read it and then you can look it up in the dictionary yourself. That's a great step in the right direction. Then maybe make a flashcard of it so that you can remember it. It's a little difficult to memorize all the kanji characters because there's about two, there's a little over 2,000 of them that you would need to know. But if you memorize just the individual characters you need for, for driving related things, you probably, or for traffic related things, you probably be able to get those down pretty quickly. And then every time you come across one, if you have your GoPro on, you know, freeze frame that, that frame and you can kind of translate it by yourself later or again ask a Japanese friend or someone to help you out. So a quick summary, do you need to speak Japanese to ride a motorcycle in Japan? If you plan to stay here a short time, nope. You can rent the bike, you can bring an international license, and you can do a lot of things in English. Just be careful of the cops. You don't want to get pulled over. And if you plan to stay here a longer time, it's definitely better to have some Japanese language ability. But that would just help your life overall in general living in Japan or spending time in Japan. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. If you have any comments or feedback, leave it down in the comments below. And I'll see you guys next time. Peace. Ride safe.